All right, everybody, welcome back to another video. If you've ever thought about getting into homebrewing, but something along the way just somehow stopped you, let me help clear up some misconceptions you might have had about homebrewing in this video. Hey everybody, my name's Steve. I'm the apartment brewer. Thanks for checking out this channel. Typically on my channel, I will do either a grain to glass video where I take a beer all the way from start to finish in the same video, or I'll do something like this, which is a shorter, more informative kind of informal video. If you like either of those things, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, and go ahead and check out my channel page for more content. Today, we're gonna to be making a video that's a little bit different. Um, this one is actually not necessarily aimed at brewers, but it's more aimed at people who are thinking about getting into brewing or thinking about starting out in this awesome hobby. But something might have held you back, right? So we're gonna talk about five misconceptions that the general public has about the home brewing hobby and why it doesn't matter and you should get into home brewing anyway. These misconceptions are either ones that I had personally or ones that I've seen pop up a lot in channel comments where people are concerned about a certain thing about home brewing. And I figured instead of just writing back to everybody individually, which I will do anyway, um, I figured I would actually just address this in a single video. The first misconception is home brewing is really expensive. And this is only as true as you want it to be. <laughs> home brewing does not need to be as expensive as most of us end up making it. In fact, most of the expense that you have in home brewing goes into equipment that you really don't need. Uh, all you really need to be successful with in home brewing is a pot, a way to heat it up to boiling temperatures, and a plastic bucket. For the most part, that will get you 95% of what you need in home brewing. Your ingredients are actually not very expensive at all. On average, the ingredients for my five gallon batches of beer range from about $30 all the way up to about $80, and if I'm going absolutely bananas, sometimes $100. When you break it down by the bottle, uh, you get about 48 bottles out of a five gallon batch of beer. That averages out to somewhere about 50 cents to $2 a bottle of beer. So basically, if you're brewing anything from a Bud Light clone all the way up to like a barrel-aged Belgian quad, for example, you are not actually going to be spending more than 25% of what you would actually pay for a bottle or can of that particular beer should you go out to the beer store or to your local brewery and buy something like it like that. The place where home brewing starts to get expensive really is the equipment and that is entirely up to you as to how much you spend on that. For not much more than the actual cost of a batch of beer, you can get yourself a starter kit that will get you everything you need to start brewing. And if you wanna stick with that starter kit equipment for the rest of your brewing career, that is actually entirely possible and completely okay. So it all comes down to the equipment and the overall cost is just up to you. Misconception number two is that homebrewed beer is never ever gonna get close to the quality level that you would get from a professional brewery. And that is partially true. However, it's also partially false. While it is certainly true that most home brewers are A, not going to brew as frequently as the pros, and B, not going to brew on as nifty of equipment as the pros, uh, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to make better or worse beer. In fact, every year there is a national homebrew competition that is uh, that takes entries from brewers all across the United States. And you know who shows up to check out what they're actually making? Professional brewers from names like Sam Adams, Anheuser-Busch, Sierra Nevada, Dogfish Head, just to name a few. Uh, more often than not, the winning beers that come from these large-scale homebrew competitions are actually, in fact, world-class beers which you can make by yourself in your basement or your garage. In reality, the only limiting factor on the quality of your beer is in fact you, yourself, the brewer, and your individual skill level. The more you practice what you're working on, the more you practice your craft, the better you will get at it. And indeed, when you're able to actually pick the finest quality ingredients that the pros don't necessarily have the contracts for, or the relationships with the suppliers to actually sustain themselves by getting top of the line malts, yeast, and hops, you're actually getting an edge on them by doing that. For a home brewer, it's really not all that hard to get special ingredients ordered for your beer. If you want a very specific kind of yeast or a very specific malt made from a very specific maltster from a very specific part of the world, uh, malted in a very specific way, yes, some big name breweries can pull that off on a commercial scale, but it's really not the case for most of them. Add to that the fact that you can afford to treat your own water extremely precisely, which most breweries can kind of ballpark at best, but still have to tap into a municipal water supply. 
Added that to the fact you can leave your beer in your fermenters as long as you want to without losing money because you're not trying to sell it, which in turn makes for better beer. There's a lot of things that home brewers have going for them that pros don't necessarily get to take advantage of, and that can actually give some of the best home brewers uh, the chance to make better beer, in some cases, than the professionals. Misconception number three is one that I actually seem to get a lot in the comments section. Um, and I think it has to do with a lack of understanding of how the uh, commercial brewing process works and what the chemistry is in beer. And that is that home brewed beer uh, has chemicals in it and other sorts of impurities that are naturally filtered out by the professionals in their brewing process because they have to be regulated in their products and stuff like that. That's not really true unless you intentionally put something into your beer that is actually harmful. Or you get your beer infected and moldy and you start drinking something that could actually harm you. That is really the only case in which your beer contains something toxic that's not alcohol. People often forget that the most dangerous thing in beer, as Peter Genius would say, is the alcohol itself. Uh, and that is the case. I think the reason why a lot of people think about this um, is because they're thinking about basically bootleg distillation in which, you know, making moonshine, you are actually capable of producing uh, certain kinds of toxic types of alcohol in a distillation process uh, that is indeed very harmful for you. You know, the most common one we think of is methanol uh, or wood alcohol. It's a very toxic substance that can easily make its way into anything that you try to distill at home unless you have very careful practices about it. Methanol is actually produced in very, very small quantities during fermentation naturally. However, it is not actually at a harmful level. Uh, compared to when you distill it and obviously you increase the concentration of it, that's when it becomes harmful. However, it exists naturally in all beers, but it's not at a concentration that is dangerous no matter how much beer you might actually drink. Unless you have a sanitation issue and you happen to have a dangerous mold species that makes its way into your beer and then you drink that mold, you're really not going to have any sort of toxins that make their way into your body by making your own beer and drinking it. Uh, it's just simply not possible. Misconception number four is that homebrewing takes forever. You're gonna have to wait around for a whole month or two before you can actually drink your beer. It takes a full day to brew. It takes two weeks to uh, ferment. It takes two weeks to bottle condition. And then it's just not good because you have to let it age in the bottles for like another two months. That's really not true at all because that's entirely beer dependent. Like if I was brewing Russian Imperial Stouts and barley wines and stuff like that, super strong beers all the time, yes, you would definitely want to let that sit around and wait. However, there is a plethora of beers and techniques to make them within a week. I've done a bunch here on my channel. Actually, I'm gonna link a playlist right now that is all about grain to glass in less than seven days, which is entirely possible. Homebrewing does not have to take forever. A lot of beer out there does need deliberate conditioning time to get a lot better, uh, especially when it comes to stronger alcohol percentages in beer and you know much more intense flavors like roasted malts um, and you know high levels of bittering hops. Those types of beers need a little bit longer to actually condition out and become the best that they can be. And also if you're bottle conditioning, it does need a little more time. If you're lagering deliberately, it needs a little more time. But there's ways around all of that. Brewing techniques and methods have evolved so much uh, over the last 20 years that waiting around for a long time isn't really a thing anymore, uh, except in those specific styles that I talked about. So if you're worried about making a beer for a certain event or something and you will have to brew it like months and months and months in advance, uh, outside of the fringe cases that I mentioned, it's really not necessarily something you need to worry about, um, especially if you're kegging. Misconception number five is gonna take a more serious note. It might actually make a couple people upset, but it is something that I think we should talk about. Especially as home brewers, we are partially responsible for the uh, perception that we have of ourselves. And that misconception is that home brewers are uh, either alcoholics or just drink way too much for themselves. I think because we often brew five or 10 gallons of beer at a time and have kegerators at home and give out so much beer or talk about how much we're brewing beer, it kind of tends to make people think that we're drinking way too much for our own good. Some of us may be. This is a heavy topic and I'm not gonna personally say if you're drinking X amount of alcoholic beverages per day or per week that you're an alcoholic. But the reality is most of us, even though we brew five or 10 gallons at a time, we're giving a lot of that beer away. We're bringing free beer to friends and family. We're bringing kegs to parties. Uh, we're supplying weddings with alcohol. And for the most part, a lot of us are actually keeping our beer on tap for a long time. 
People often ask me a lot based on my upload schedule, how am I able to plow through five gallons of beer by myself in two weeks? The answer is very much so that it's not just me drinking this beer. I routinely bring at least 12 packs with me uh, in various circles of life uh, where I have multiple sets of people who are willing to drink my beer. And I think it's really cool. Um, one of the best things about this hobby is being able to share it with other people and be able to be that person that makes other people happy um, as a result of a product that you make. And that's probably one of the best feelings in the world, to be honest. So I really do want to crush that stigma of homebrewers are alcoholics. That's just simply not true. That being said, though, some of us do have uh, an unhealthy relationship with alcohol. And if that's the case and you need somebody to talk to, please don't hesitate to reach out to me uh, on Instagram or through a private message of some sort, and I will, be, I will do my best to help you. I'm not a professional, but I can help point you in the direction of somebody who can take care of you and can help you out. If you are struggling and it's affecting you and it's affecting other people around you, uh, it might be time to talk to somebody, and there's no shame in that. So don't be afraid to ask for help. People are here for you and they're not going to judge you. But if you're looking at this hobby and you're worried that you're going to initially make too much beer, uh, and I actually completely understand this uh, because I also thought that five gallons was just an absolute ton of beer, uh, there are a lot of options out there for both one gallon batches and three gallon batches or two and a half gallon batches. It's honestly all about the same amount of effort to make anything from one to five gallon batches. And it really just comes, comes down to an efficiency thing, but if you don't want to have five gallons of beer at once, it's totally fine. Most equipment that you can get to make yourself a five gallon batch of beer will also work just fine for a three gallon batch of beer. Um, there's also special purposefully made equipment that uh, supports the one gallon batch sizes as well. And that's honestly a great way to dabble in home brewing and just to kind of figure out whether or not you like it. All right, so just to recap, number one, you're not going to end up spending a ton of money on home brewing unless you want to. For the most part, your beer is gonna average between 50 cents and $2 a bottle. Number two, your homebrewed beer can absolutely be at the same level as a professional brewed beer, or even better, given enough time and practice. Number three, you're not going to have any issues having toxic chemicals in your beer or any sort of other sort of harmful ingredient besides alcohol, which you really want in your beer in the first place. Number four, your homebrewed beer doesn't necessarily need to take forever. In fact, many beers can be brewed in a week or less. Number five, just because you might brew a lot of beer at once does not necessarily mean that you are going to turn into an alcoholic or you are an alcoholic. On the contrary, what it means is your friends and family are probably getting a lot of free beer and that makes you a lot cooler in their eyes. Anyway, I hope you guys learned something in this video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it useful. And if you did, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the like button on this video. If you are interested in supporting the channel, please check out the merch store that is down below the description box to purchase a t-shirt, hat, pint glass, or something like that. Please also check out the description box for links to Amazon for some useful home brewing equipment that I recommend. And of course, if you wanna to contribute to this channel on a more personal level, I have a Patreon account linked in the description as well. If you want to follow me on more than just YouTube, I'm active on Instagram and Instagram only as the apartment brewer. So thanks for supporting me, guys. And if you made it this far to the video, you really are a true fan. So thank you for that. And until the next one, cheers.